Hi guys. So as I promised you that I would be uploading the second video of Excel series that I am conducting right now uh, on 10th of July, right? So uh, due to my work commitments, I won't. I was not able to record my video. But as a surprise to all of you, I am covering right now all the topics that I've. Uh, shared in the agenda file uh, previously on LinkedIn via post uh, so I would be covering today all the topics that I was to cover on 10th and 13th so I'm combining two sessions in one video uh, and I'm recording right now this session and it would get uploaded uh, before 12 a.m. in the morning on all the social media platforms on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube, right? So I will be sharing the uh, LinkedIn post with the video and I will attach the YouTube link on it as well. If you want, if you feel like subscribing my channel and if you get something valuable out of it, do subscribe and to my channel and please like and subscribe. Please uh, do like and share the videos if you feel like uh, doing the same. Yeah, so without further ado, let's straight get into the video. So today I would be covering these five topics, right? I have already created the three tabs for all of your reference. And yes, uh, one more thing, the actual files that I have on which I worked on in the videos on my first video and this file on which I am uh, working right now. I am planning to prepare a uh, um, share drive sort of thing where all the files would be uploaded and I will attach that link in my LinkedIn bio and also attach that link in the YouTube video, right? So you can uh, take the references of these uh, files from either of these two places as you feel uh, doing like right so let's start so first of all we would be covering average function so as it the name suggests that it helps to find the average in the selected data that we would be having max function helps to find the max value of the selected data yeah. similarly the minimum function is there which helps to find out the minimum value of the selected data right then comes the sum function it already I have already uh, covered the shortcut for this which is alt is equal to I would be covering today this uh, the same via formula right so how do we calculate the sum of any selected of any data that we have and then as an extension to the sum function I will uh, teach you how to apply subtotal function sum function within subtotal function right so it helps to find the sum of the selected data even with filters right for example i will be showing you the case scenario here i have already prepared the file for all, for all of you and i will be like uh, putting the filters in the student files and then i will be like uh, filtering the uh, data by months or by series and you will be able to find the total itself even after the filters so this is the benefit that subtotal function provides us right okay so let's start with max main and average function so i've covered these three functions in one tab because it's nothing like rocket science so yeah it's a basic thing that all of you must have uh, must be aware about uh, so yeah so let's start with average first right so i uh, want to find out the average of all these uh, numbers here right so let's apply the formula here is equal to I will write is equal to average bracket open and I will select the uh, data for which I need to uh, uh, find out the average I will close the bracket and I press enter so uh, so uh, there is one thing that I want to tell you so it is it provided to me with the average figure right right now by default it is uh, set as 
five values after the uh, decimal place, right? So we can adjust uh, the values by this thing, right? And it will automatically sync the uh, places after the decimal that we have. If we want to increase again, just increase decimal from here and we are good to go, right? And whatever values we are, we want after the uh, decimal, it will show you the same way. So in finance area, uh, professional way is to, in finance area or anywhere uh, where we use numbers. So it is recommended to show the values up to the two decimal places, uh, right? So somewhere it is one, somewhere it is two, but uh, nowhere it is recommended to expand the values up uh, after two, like three or four places are not recommended in a professional sense. So yeah, we are good to go with 25.93. Now let's max value now. Yeah, so it is 70. We can see as well in our list, 70 is the largest amount, right? So I hope you will get, uh, you have got all these formulas by now. If you, if not, please, it is recommended to uh, listen the recording again. Uh, so to get familiar with these formulas. So these are the basic ones that you will be applying in your day to day life. Right. Uh, let's come to some formula, right? So yeah, I have already applied the formula, but I will apply in front of you and you so that you will be Okay, so I've already applied the formulas here and I've deleted for your reference so that it will be clear to you like what I'm doing, right? So I will be uh, writing this formula and I will be selecting this range where I want to apply this formula, right? And I've selected this range and we are good to go now, right? Now what is required for you you don't need to apply this sum formula in all the columns line by line. Instead, what you can do as a smart way of doing this, just if you are able to see this cursor, my cursor turns into plus sign when I uh, go to the right side of the right side of the corner cell, right? I just drag this cell to apply the formula to all the cells automatically, right? And now if you, now there is a another formula which I've already covered in my first video, which is alt equal to, I will delete this formula just to show you again, like how this formula works. So I will select the whole data on which I want to perform that activity. So I've selected the data. Now I will press alt is equal to, right? And as you can see, the formula is auto populated itself to all the columns with the sum formula, right? Now, I think you are good to go with the max, minimum, and average and the sum functions. Now, let's go to subtotal function. It is most important function which you would be using, right? Uh, so this is a data. I would be applying the subtotal function on the students folder and I would be putting the filters on series tab and the months tab so that you will be uh, you will get familiar on how this uh, function works in uh, real life. So this is the formula I will apply again in front of you is equal to subtotal right I will press tab so that it will take automatically. Now it is asking me like under subtotal what is the formula that I want to put average count count a max minimum product so I can put average I can put any function under subtotal so whenever I apply the filter it will automatically convert like apply the formula within uh, that filtered range right so for now I need some so I will go to nine I can press nine myself as well or I can select from here as well by selecting from here right I will select here I press comma and then I will select the range on which I 
I want to apply these filters on which I want to apply this formula. I will just close the bracket and yeah, we are good to go. Now we have this formula applied, right? Now I will show you how to apply the filters. Let's say I have applied the filters by Control Shift L, right? I have applied the filters by Control Shift L. Control plus Shift plus L to apply the filters. Okay. Just I am writing to for your reference. Apply filters, right? I will attach this file. Don't worry. I will apply this. I will attach this file. These two files for uh, the file on which I worked on in session one and this file I will attach. Uh, once I create a hyperlink for this on the SharePoint or uh, wherever I feel like do, uh, doing so or maybe the Google Drive I will share the link anywhere I can do that and I will share the link uh, uh, via LinkedIn post and I will upload on my YouTube channel as well so you can you, uh, you will get an update and or if you want to receive individually on your email IDs uh, you can feel free to comment down in the uh, comment section of the uh, YouTube channel or the LinkedIn post that I will be doing right and I will share the, uh, these files to you uh, so you can do either ways right you, you can get the file other ways so yeah let's uh, jump to the uh, jump back to topic so uh, I will uh, right now apply the filters on let's say t1 t10 and t11 and t12 I want the subtotal function applied on these four apartments numbers right as you can see these apartment numbers are linked to months april feb jan and march and it has given me the sum applied on this filtered range remember i have told you what is the purpose of this function it helps to find the sum in the selected data even with filters so this is the thing that has happened here. I put the filters on these four things, these four columns, these four uh, cells, right? And it has fetched me the sum on this filter data only, right? I hope you have understood this thing. Let me put an example here as well. For example, I will squeeze the data now to just Feb and Jan. So yeah, as you can see, it has automatically converted my sum to the selected range only. So this is just the beauty of this formula. So yeah, I hope it is clear now all the formulas. Feel free to comment down your suggestions what I'm lacking in my uh, explanation thing or if you are not getting anything like understanding wise right where I, I can improve if you can suggest anything feel free to comment down the same just a caution here no vulgar comments i will straight away delete the comment whosoever does the same just a suggestion point i'm asking from you to comment down so that i can improve myself in my coming videos right so yeah this is all for now yeah, this side, Aman, signing off. Thank you so much. Have a nice day, guys. Bye.